Good morning, Greystone. Man, isn't daylight savings nice? <laughs> I'm loving this. It feels like spring. This is a good time. Well, why don't you guys go ahead and stand to your feet? We have an awesome morning. We have some awesome songs to sing together. And um, just the theme of this morning is just looking to who God is and knowing that he is enough for us. He is everything that we need in this moment, no matter how your week went, no matter if you feel like you have failed somehow this week, if you feel like you need a restart, or even if for some reason you have had the best week of your life, no matter what, we know that Jesus is enough. He gives us everything that we need in this moment and beyond. So as we sing this morning, let's remember that, who Jesus is for us that he is everything we can lean on and trust in. So come on, let's sing this together.
kingdom come. So don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up high. Don't fear no evil. Fix your eyes on this one true. God is badly in love with you. So take courage, hold Trust that God has everything you need in this moment, that Jesus is enough, and he doesn't want our perfection, he wants us to be with him. So sing with me. Swing wide, all you heavens, let the praise go up as the walls come down. All creation, everything with breath, repeat the sound, all his children, clean hands. Your heart's good base for God. His name is Jesus. Oh, swing wide, swing wide. All you have it. Let the praise go up as the walls come down. All creation, everything with breath repeats the sound. All his children, the hands to your heart's good base. Swing wide, swing wide, are you here?
many years from now, would you be willing to trade all the days from this day to that for one chance, just one chance, to come back here and tell our enemies that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom! of a message series called Advance, and we've been studying through the book of Acts. I'm going to circle back to a verse today. We're going to be in Acts chapter 6. So if you have a copy of the Scriptures, I want to encourage you to turn there. Uh, before I get in the message, let, let me welcome everybody. Let me say hello to our Walton campus, our Coney campus, everybody who's watching online. How's the Azor campus? Are y'all away? Y'all, y'all ready to go? I, I, like, I like the energy. Do y'all like daylight savings time? I absolutely love daylight savings time. I think everybody's happier with the sun staying out uh, later. And so, I want to let you guys know uh, about a couple of things. One is, uh, earlier this week, we were able to interview uh, Coach Mark Rick uh, for the Family Goals podcast. I've got a picture here of me and Coach Rick and uh, Davey Pollock. And I want to encourage you to listen to it. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to challenge you. He talks about his heart attack. He talks about... Uh, his battle with Parkinson's d- disease. And everything, the entire conversation, Coach Rick continues to bring it back to Jesus. And his hope is, is in heaven. I think it's going to encourage you. It's going to challenge you. And so Family Goals Podcast, if you know how to listen to a podcast, uh, I know some of us are technology challenged, but uh, just Google Family Goals with Davey Pollock and Pastor Jay, and you should be able to find it. I asked Coach Rick because David Pollock was in his very first recruiting class at the University of Georgia, and I wanted to know, you know, how much money was exchanging hands to, to get Pollock to come, you know, to, to Georgia? You know, was it bags of cash? And he said, no, it's just some bags of Burger King uh, for Davey Pollock. And so that's all it took, just a little Burger King to get him to the University of Georgia. The other thing I want to let you guys know about is Easter. Easter is coming up. It's April 17th. I want you to mark it on your calendars, and I really want to encourage you to be here. I know we have some people watching online, and some of you can't come because you're in Brazil and you're in Mississippi and all these other places, but if you can come, you need to come Easter, okay? We have the most phenomenal service plan. Our creative team has gone over the top this year, and so you want to be here, okay? You want to be at one of our campuses for uh, Easter, and this is the service to bring someone. If there's someone in your life that you're saying, hey, I want to bring them to church, a family member, or a friend, this is the Sunday to bring them, April 17th. Put it on your calendar. Okay, so we're in Acts chapter 6. We're circling back to this, to this passage, Acts chapter 6. I'm, I'm going to read the first few verses, and then we're going to talk about it. Verse 1 says, but as, as the believers rapidly multiplied, there were rumblings of discontent. The Greek-speaking believers complained about the Hebrew-speaking believers, saying that their widows were being discriminated against in the daily distribution of food. And so the, the church is rapidly growing. And with more people, like the more people you have, the more issues you're going to have, the more problems you're going to have. It says that, that there were rumblings of discontentment among the believers. Like there was complaining going on in the church. But this is really hard for me to believe. It's really hard for me to believe that, that there's actually people that are, that are complaining in the church, but they're people, right? I mean, the church is full of people. We're dealing with, we're dealing with people. And so the, the Greek-speaking believers felt like their widows were being discriminated against in the daily distribution of food. 
Now, we've already been there because we're kind of circling back, but we're, we're in around Acts 13 or 14 if, if you've been uh, following along with us. And the apostle Peter has already had this vision of the sheet coming down from heaven and the, these, an, uh, these uh, animals being on the sheet and, and basically God saying that he doesn't show favoritism. That all people, the, the gospel of God is, is, is for the salvation of all people. Not only for the Jews, but for the Gentiles as well. That God doesn't show favoritism and, 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 and the church shouldn't be showing favoritism toward the Jewish uh, widows. And so, something immediately jumps off to me, even, even in this first verse. And I don't know when you study the scriptures, but when I study the scriptures, I ask God to reveal something to me, show something to me that I've never seen before. And one of the things that just jumps off the page to me is it's the church's job to care for widows. And we see this throughout the entire uh, scriptures, that, that it's our job as the church to care for widows. And many times in the Bible, uh, it associates widows and orphans. Or in the Old Testament, it says the fatherless, those who don't have fathers. And so it puts the widows and the orphans together and they're very close to the heart of God. James 1, and this is a famous verse on caring for widows and orphans. It says, pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. So, so true religion, genuine faith, is caring for widows and orphans and living a pure and holy life. Now, one of the things that has been heavy on my heart the last several weeks, and I know most of us have been following along with this war in the Ukraine, and uh, all the refugees that, are, that have come uh, out of this. And at last count, last time I watched the news, it was over two million refugees had left the, the Ukraine. Now, I haven't, I haven't watched the news this weekend. I've been kind of engrossed into uh, March Madness, but that's a whole nother, whole nother story. Most of the people leaving the Ukraine are women and children. So the men are staying back to fight, right? The husbands and the and the fathers. But one of the things I've been praying about and thinking a lot about is what happens if these husbands and fathers lose their lives? We're going to have over two million widows and orphans, fatherless. And it's the church's responsibility to care for widows and orphans. And so what are we going to do about it? I don't know the answer to that question, but I'm putting it out there to the church. I'm putting it out there to you guys to let's begin thinking about this. Let's begin praying about this and what is it that God is gonna lead us to do because we know that widows and orphans are very close to the heart of God. Verse two, so the 12 called a meeting. So they got this problem, they got this issue. So the 12, we're talking about the apostles, the 12 apostles call a meeting of all the believers and they said, we apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God, not running a food program. And so the brothers, and, and so brothers select seven men who are well respected and full of the spirit and wisdom, and we will give them this responsibility. Then we apostles can spend our time in prayer and the teaching of the word. So they call a meeting, they come up with, with a plan. And they say, we apostles, we need to stay focused on what God has called us to do. We need to stay focused upon prayer and, and the, the teaching uh, of God's word. And so we want to delegate this food distribution uh, ministry to the widows to seven capable men. So we're beginning to see some structure. We're beginning to see some organization uh, in the church. The, the importance of logistics, the importance of the delegation of responsibilities. Verse five says, everyone liked this idea. To me, this is the most amazing verse in all of scripture. <laughs> everyone liked this idea because typically when you, when you have a plan and you have an idea, there's always somebody who doesn't like the idea. You know, there's are those some people who they're not gonna like the idea no matter, no matter what it is. No, el no elbowing or anything. 
everyone liked this idea, and they chose the following. Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Philip, Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenes, and Nicholas of Antioch, an earlier convert to the Jewish faith. These seven were presented to the apostles who prayed for them as they laid their hands on them. And so everyone liked this idea. They chose seven men who were full of the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, controlled by the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit, full of faith, full of wisdom, and men who were well-respected by others so that they had good character. And the apostles laid hands on them, commissioned them, prayed for them. So what was the result of this decision? Look at verse 7. So God's message continued to spread. The number of believers increased greatly in Jerusalem and many of the Jewish priests were converted too. And so the gospel continues to spread. The number of believers increased. The church grew. And it says even some Jewish priests were becoming followers of Jesus Christ. And so the church was able to stay on mission. The kingdom of God continued to grow and and expand. And they were able to stay outwardly focused. See, too, too many times when, when you have a lot of complaining in the church, the church gets inwardly focused, and the church starts looking at themselves. And when there's inwardly focusedness, then there's divisions in the church and church splits. But they were able to stay unified, outwardly focused, and the church grew and expanded. If you're taking notes, point number one is serving in the church is a high calling. Serving in the church is a high calling. These seven men were chosen to serve. They were waiting tables. And I want you to see that this is not an entry-level position. Okay, they didn't just choose anybody to to fill the role. Okay, they they chose, listen with the description uh, about the men. They chose men who were full of faith full of the Holy Spirit, men who had strong character, men who were wise. Now, Stephen was one of the seven. Let's look at verse eight. It says that Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed amazing miracles and signs among the people. So Stephen knew God. Stephen knew the word of God. Stephen preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. And and later we find out, and we've already done this message, but Stephen was the first martyr. He was the first Christian who died for his faith in Jesus. And I want you to see this man of God, Stephen, waiting on tables was not beneath Stephen. He, he, He did it because this is what God called him to do. He wasn't simply waiting on tables because he was incapable of doing anything else. He was waiting on tables because this is what God had called him to do. So at Greystone Church across all of our campuses, we have hundreds of volunteers, hundreds of people who are involved in serving the church. And each person is doing something, the role that they're doing. They're not doing that role because they're incapable of doing something else. You're doing that role because this is what God has called you to do. Well, the kids are having fun today, (laughs) that's for sure. Let's pray for those people who are serving in the kids' area. Aren't we glad we're in here? So whatever, whatever role you're, you're serving in, you're serving because that's what God has called you to do. And so we have a parking team, and we have a landscape team, and we have a cleaning team, and we have a security team, and we have an admin team, and a, and a greeting team. And everyone who's serving in these roles are not serving these roles because they're not spiritually mature enough to do something else. They're serving in these roles because this is what God has called them to do. And so... In the early days of, uh, of Greystone, we used to meet in this warehouse. We had this, this renovated warehouse facility, and I, and I see people in here who were with us when we were, in the, we were in the warehouse. And people had this romanticized view of the warehouse, like it was just this great facility. And if you weren't ever there, it wasn't. 
Okay, I can take you by there. It was very, very humble beginnings. Like the, the septic system backed up a few times. And the, I was preaching one Sunday and all the, you know, the, the power went off. You know, the lights went off right in the middle of, of everything. Um, and we were just getting started as a church. You know, our, ki- our kids were real small. And we were, we were just getting going. And this couple had joined the church. And they were wanting to get involved. They were wanting to, wanting to get connected. And so they said, hey, uh, we want to take your family to a steak dinner. Like, we want to we go out and get some steaks. And we, we weren't really wanting to go, you know, because we're super busy and the kids were playing sports and we have activities every night. And, and, but we went anyway. They wanted to get involved in the church. And so the wife was already involved. She was in small group and she was serving the kids area and she was on the prayer team. Like, like she was super involved, but the husband hadn't gotten involved yet. So we go and we're, we're eating steaks. You know, we've got the kids with us. Our kids are small. And so he says, hey, I want to get connected. I want to serve in the church. I said, well, that's great because we're just getting started and we have opportunities galore. You know, whatever you want to do, we have the opportunity. And so I started going through everything we have. We have a parking team, greeters, ushers, children's ministry, landscape team, cleaning team, prayer team, student ministry, production team, admin team, outreach team, uh, you could lead a small group. I mean, whatever you, whatever you want to do, like we have, we have an opportunity for you. So I go through this whole list. And he says, well, well none of that stuff really excites me. <laughs> and I'm like, well, well what do you want to do? He said, I want, I want to serve on the elder board. And I thought, we're on our first date here. You're already asking me to marry you? <laughs> like the steaks haven't even come yet. And you think you can take me to a steak dinner and you're going to get a good night kiss at the front door when we go home? But what I was really thinking is, he doesn't really know what he's asking. And maybe he's thinking about a position... But serving as an elder in the church and those men who've, who've served as elders... It's a high calling. It's a major commitment. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 3 and live in a life above reproach. And the pain and the suffering that goes through some of, the, some of these meetings and serving as an elder. And, and an elder is, is a shepherd of the church. And the Bible is very clear that a shepherd lays his life down for the flock. Like the church is more important than the, than the elder. This is a super high calling. Do, do you know what you're asking? This is a big commitment. And there, there's a story in, in Matthew chapter 20, and Jesus says the same thing. And it's a story of James and John's mom. Now, she's a helicopter mom. Got any helicopter moms in here? I, I know a helicopter mom really well. <laughs> James and John's mom's like the ultimate helicopter mom. Let's listen to this. Matthew 20, verse 20 and following. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons and kneeling down asked a favor of him. What is it you want, he asked. She said, grant that one of these sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. So James and John's mom, which is could be a little bit embarrassing, like, you know, hey, I want, I want one son, and when you get in your kingdom and, and you're in heaven and you're sitting on your throne, I want one of, one of my sons to sit on your right, and I want my other son to sit on your, your left. Like, I want them to have the, the highest positions in the kingdom. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup I am going to drink. Now, he's referring to the cup of suffering. You remember when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane? And he says, Father, please take this cup away from me, but not my will, but your will be done. This cup of suffering. He, he says, can, can, can you drink from the same cup that I'm going to drink? And we can, they answered. They said to him, and then, and then Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink from my cup. But to sit at my right or my left is not for me to grant. 
These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard about this, so the other ten disciples, remember there's 12. When the ten heard about this, they were indignant with the two brothers. Jesus called them together and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lorded over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus says, you, you don't know what you're asking. In order to get a position of greatness in the kingdom of God, it will take a lot of pain and suffering and sacrifice. Can you drink from the same cup that I am drinking from? And of course, Jesus is referring to his death on the cross and his sacrifice for us. Jesus said, if you want to be great in the kingdom of God, it will happen through service. Serving others is the path to greatness. That's my main point today. That's what I want everyone walking out of here, everyone listening, everyone watching. Serving others is the path to greatness. You want to be great in God's kingdom, in God's economy. It happens through humility and it happens through service. See, God's world and God's kingdom and God's economy is completely different than the world. Our world says build your platform. Get to the top any way you can. Make a name for yourself. He who has the most toys wins. Do what feels right. Treat yourself. You're a king, you're a queen. You're gonna be judged by the success or your accomplishments or your status in life. Get all you can, save all you can, sit on your can. That's what the world says, right? I don't even think I said that right. Get all you can, can all you can, get sit on your can. Jesus is teaching the exact opposite. He says the road to greatness is through service. He says if you want to be great in my kingdom, make yourself a slave. Become a slave to other people. Humble yourself, be other-centered. Put others' needs as more important than your own. Be rich in good deeds. Be rich in serving other people. He says the, the way to greatness is through waiting on tables. It's through caring for the least of these, caring for widows and orphans. It's dying to ourselves so that Jesus can live through us. Less of me, more of him. It's humbling ourselves dying to ourselves. When we, we pray, we're, we're pouring ourselves out so that God can fill us with the Holy Spirit. Less of me, more of him. You wanna be great in the kingdom of God, it happens through serving others. We are most like Jesus when we are humbly serving others. We're most like Jesus when we are humbly serving others. That last verse there, Matthew 20, 28, says, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, did not come to be served, but to serve. Philippians 2, 3 through 11 says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage, but rather he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God 
the Father. The King of kings and Lord of lords left the perfections of heaven to become one of us, to, to walk in our shoes, to put on human flesh, and he went through everything that we go through. He humbles himself, and he became a servant, and he became obedient to death. He laid his life down for us. And in the kingdom of God, he is exalted to the highest Place. He is the name that is above every name. The path to greatness is serving others. If we want to be like Jesus, we humbly serve others. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, that Thursday night, he wraps a towel around his waist and he gets on his knees and he washes his disciples' feet. He humbles himself and, and he washes their feet. He serves them. If we want to be like Jesus, we are to serve other people. We're to humble ourselves and serve other people. Caring for others, laying our lives down for others. Who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? It's those people who are serving. It's the parking team who are parking cars in the rain and in the, in the cold. It's the volunteers in our kids' room who are trying to herd, you know, 13 toddler kids. It's our volunteer cleaning team who, who vacuum the church every week and clean toilets every week. Nobody knows their name. They're humbly serving Jesus. It's the families who bring foster kids into their houses. The Ladners, Jennifer came home the other night, the Ladners, they have two biological kids, they have a, a child that was a foster care, foster child that they adopted, they have another foster kid, and then they just brought in two more foster kids into their house. And Jennifer took a bunch of stuff over there for the babies and all that, and she came back and she looked at me and she said, the Ladners are crazy. <laughs> like, all these kids in their house, like they're crazy. They're not crazy. They're doing what God has called them to do. They're serving the least of these. Who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? It's the, it's the person who's living way below their means so they can give more to the church and give more to the kingdom of God. It's those people who are ministering to others in prison. It's the guys that we have in our church who, no one knows this, but they go and mow the lawns at the single mom's houses. And their lawns look great, and their neighbors say, well, who does your yard? It's the guys at church who are volunteering to do their yard. It's the person who takes the homeless guy a Kroger gift card and prays over him. It's the person who gets on her knees in her prayer closet every week and, and, and prays for the prayer request. It, it's the folks who are leading our students' small groups on Wednesday night. We have, we have small group leaders. They've been doing it for years. We've had like six or seven student pastors come and go, and we have the same volunteers. They say, hey, I started with sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade. I'm going to stick with them until they graduate. The people who are going to be great in the kingdom of heaven are the unsung heroes that no one knows their name. You don't know their name. This is, this is my opinion but the celebrity pastors are not the ones who are gonna be great in the kingdom of heaven. It's not the famous people on social media with the blue check mark by their name. It's the unsung heroes that no one knows. These seven men were waiting tables. And they were waiting tables so the gospel could be preached and the church could grow and the kingdom of God could expand. And it's through their service that lives are changed for all eternity. Let's listen to Amanda's giving or serving testimony. Went to a bunch of churches trying to find a church home, one that our kids enjoyed and we enjoyed as well. We came to Greystone. We were kind of in and out for a year, but eventually this became home to us. We ended up becoming members of the church and 
once we became members members of the church, I just wanted to start volunteering. I, I wanted to help out in any way that I could, just for the first time ever, kind of felt like that. So I work in technology at Rocky Branch Elementary, so I immediately volunteered just to do technology. Honestly, I've never felt the need to do this until I came to Greystone, and I think it's important. I think it's good for my kids to see this. Um, it's it's just, it's what Jesus did. Like he was sent, he served, and that's what we do. And I think that's a good example. I grew up old school Catholic, which was great, but there was not much serving going on at all. So when I came to Greystone, that was what moved me. You see all these people doing things for everybody else. And um, so that's why I do what I do. I, I just, I want to give back, I want to help, and I want to teach my kids to do that when they get older. The most beautiful thing that I, has happened since I've started serving is seeing people, not just people, kids come in here just to have fun and they walk out of here knowing God. They they came in here and they had no idea who God was and then when they walk out of here and they're ready to give their life to the Lord. Um, that's, that's the whole reason that we do what we do. So Amanda serves on Wednesday nights at our Oconee campus, and we're having 150, 200 students. It's a traffic jam out there at the Oconee campus, and we've had dozens and dozens of students come to know Christ and crash the waters of baptism. And I love what she said. That's what it's all about, that we're serving so that lives can be changed for all eternity. Let me, let me close with this. When we serve others, we are serving Jesus. When we serve others, we, we are serving Jesus. I want us to look at Matthew 25. This is at the second coming of Christ. Of course, we're all longing for the second coming of Christ. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he'll sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence, and he will separate the people as a sheep, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He'll place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. How do you know if you're, you're a sheep or a goat? Then the king will say to those on his right, the sheep, come you who are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink or a stranger and show you hospitality or, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Whatever we do for the least of these, we are doing it for Jesus. When we serve others, we're serving Jesus. One of the ways that we worship Jesus is through serving others. So every Sunday we have an opportunity to serve Jesus. We call this a, a worship service, or we call this a church service. It, it's a service. And the reason why we call it a service or a worship service is we're worshiping Jesus through our service. We don't come to church to be served. We come to church to serve. We, we come to, to give our tithes and our talents and our, and our treasures, our time, as an offering to Jesus. Like, that's, that's why we're coming. We're, we're bringing this offering our time and our talents and our treasures. We all have different talents. We all have different gifts and abilities. 
We all have different amounts of time based upon our schedules. And so we're, we're bringing this offering to Jesus. And so when we park a car, we hold a door, we hold a baby, or we serve a cup of coffee, or we usher someone to a seat, or we greet someone with a smile, or we lead a small group or a student ministry small group. Yes, we're serving that person, but we're serving Jesus. We don't come to church to be served, but to, but to serve. And it's through serving others that they, that they hear the word of God and their lives might be changed for all eternity. I love it. It's so exciting that we get to be a part of something that's so much bigger than ourselves. And you park a car, you hold a door, or you invite somebody in, and that person commits his or her life to Jesus Christ and their life is changed for all eternity. And then you see them crash the waters of baptism and us together, we all got to be a part of it. There's nothing better than that. And God gives us the opportunity to be a part of it, to serve him. And so the application is very simple today, is to join a serving team, to find your place of service. We have an opportunity for everybody. Like God wants you to use your time and your talents to serve him and to serve the kingdom and to be a part of something bigger than yourself. And so we have this sheet, join a team. Uh, the staff have made it very simple. They've broken it up into four teams. We have our kids team, of course, like Sunday mornings, but like this coming Saturday, we're having a big egg hunt for the community. We need people to serve. We need people out there. It's like a one-time thing, go out and serve the community. Student ministry, there's all kinds of opportunities to serve. First impressions, facilities, there's, there's different, different levels of commitment. You could commit to one week, you could commit once a month, one time. You know, by signing up, you're not you know, signing your life away. We'll follow up with you and see what works best for your schedule. But the pathway to greatness in the kingdom of God is through serving other people. Let me pray for us. God, we thank you so much for Jesus Christ, his model, his example. He modeled for us service. He modeled for us humility. On the night that he was betrayed, he got on his knees, wrapped a towel around his waist and washed the disciples' feet. And he challenged the disciples to do likewise challenging us to do likewise. I pray that, that we would serve others, that we would be a church who, who washes feet, that we would be a church who, who waits tables. God, that we would be a church that, that humbly puts other people as more important than us so that we can share with them the love of Jesus, so that we can usher them into the presence of God and ultimately into the kingdom of God. God, true satisfaction in life, true reward in life, true contentment in life only comes through finding our place of service, finding our place in the kingdom. Being a part of what you're doing and being a part of seeing other people's lives change for all eternity. So I pray for each person here, each person watching, that we can all find our place of service and God, I pray if there's anyone here, anyone watching, anyone listening who has never put his or her faith in you, I pray today would be the day of their salvation, that the word of God can change their life for all eternity. And pray it all in your son's precious and holy name. Amen. Well, as we continue in worship, um, this is your time to respond to him, to speak with our God who's so personal and real to us. So we have our typical response stations. We have uh, communion over here. We have the hope chest over here. And then we still have um, the prayer team and the cross over here in the corner if you need it. But it might also just mean you stay in your seat and you pray or you sing 
whatever it looks like for you in this moment to respond to what God is telling you, this is your time. He's listening, he's waiting, he's for you. So come on, let's stand to our feet. Let's respond to him, let's sing his name out.
promises Time and time again You have proven You do just what you said Though the storms may come And the winds may blow I'll remain steadfast And let my heart learn When you speak a word It will come to pass Great is your faithfulness to me Great is your faithfulness Sun to the setting sun, I will praise your name. Great is your faithfulness to me. Though the earth may pass away, your word remains the same. Your history can prove there's nothing you can't do. You're faithful and you're true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I will remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come.
Man, what an incredible service this morning, right, church? Oh, man. Good, so good. Well, I hope, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's service. We're almost about done. Today's the first day of spring. What a great day to worship the Lord together. Uh, my name is Josh Frazier. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the Azora campus pastor, one of the pastors on staff. And uh, if you are here for the first time, I want to direct your attention to uh, this communication card. It's behind your seat or underneath your seat, wherever you're sitting. If you don't mind, let us know if you're here for the first time. Check that box. Let us know how you heard about our church. What we'll do is we'll donate a package of socks from to City of Ho, uh, City of Refuge, rather, um, for your very first visit uh, in your honor. Uh, and it goes to help homeless ministry, the least of these, these things that we've been talking about uh, today. And so let us know about that. We're going to move into a time of giving. Uh, there's five ways to give. Those are up on the screen. And uh, we want to make it as easy as possible. If you are here for the first time, there's no pressure for this. Uh, but put that communication card in the offering bucket. Ushers, if you guys hold on one second before I mention this. Man, it is incredible to see people serve. It's incredible. Like, you guys don't see these unsung heroes like Pastor Jay was talking about, but I want to highlight one of them. Can we give a round of applause for Owen up here on stage? <laughs> Owen is a, is a student in our student ministry. This is the first time he's on stage. Uh, he's been killing it on Wednesday nights with our student ministry, and so I don't know how it all worked out, but you're here, dude. Are you good? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> so, I mean talk about serving. Thank you for all of you who serve in the church and outside of these walls. Thank you for how you serve. Ushers, if you guys don't mind, go ahead and come in down. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to give back. Like what, like what Jonathan was talking about, our time, talent, and treasure. All of that in culmination is, is, is meant to advance your kingdom. It's all about you. It always will be about you. And so thank you for the opportunity to give with a generous heart in this moment. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I have a, I have a few things to share, okay? Uh, and it's a lot, so I need you guys to like laser focus in on, on with this thing. So Easter's around the corner. Could you, I don't know if you guys know this or not. We have Easter coming up. Our Easter services here at the Azor campus are 9 and 11. We're at 9 and 11. And so uh, what we are doing this Saturday, Jonathan alluded to it, we have a huge Easter egg hunt outside of the walls at Bay Creek Middle School, all right, and that is this, that is this card. You may see this card. There's a ton more of these cards at guest services. Grab a few more of these. This is your opportunity to invite your neighbors, your friends, your coworkers, your sports uh, team players, all of that to Bay Creek Middle this Saturday, 11 to 1. I'm going to be there. Our staff's going to be there. We would love for you guys to help with this. I hope we'll have hundreds and hundreds, and if not thousands, at Bay Creek Middle this Saturday. A lot of amazing things there. Uh, like Jonathan talked about, uh, our serve uh, serving opportunities. Easter, we're going to pack these two services, 9 and 11, coming up. We need people to help serve. So I don't want to rehash everything he said, but this card is a card that's going to help us to, to follow up with you. Drop this in the basket out in the lobby. You'll see some balloons there. You'll see some of our staff. If you have any questions about serving, we'd love to answer any of your questions. Drop this in the basket just like this, just like that. Perfect, okay? Last thing. I want to talk to you as an Azora campus, and, Ocon and this, this, out this also uh, does something with our online service as well. <laughs> Here's a little card, a little, little half sheet of paper. Our plan is to, hopefully, after Easter services, to change our service times from 9 to 10.30, from 9.30 to 11. So our, our services have been 9 and 10.30, but we want to move them to 9.30 and 11. And the reason is we want to reach more families, young, more young families for Christ. The later services are always better, right? So... Yeah, maybe. Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, we got some claps. Okay, so write that. You clapped on this survey. Perfect, right? So just to let us know, we want to hear from you. We would love to know what service you'd like to attend and just some, just some other things. So drop this in the bucket and the baskets on the way out. Guys, that's it. You guys are dismissed. Have a great week.